can turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 3. Continuing on from last week, I never know exactly if the Lord's going to let me continue on, but this week he did, two weeks ago he didn't. So Philippians 3, verses 2 to 5. Chapter 4, Josiah, if you keep watching me. Chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. It's just two verses, but we have more verses and other texts to look at, so keep track. All right, Josiah. Mm -hmm. All right, so in Philippians chapter 4, it says, this is Paul's closing statements to the church at Philippi. He said, I urge Judea, and I urge since when you have a T, Y, the same. Sintich. Sintich. All right. She must have been here to that end. Okay. Uh, to live in harmony in the Lord. Apparently, there was a couple of ladies that maybe didn't get along. I don't know. But anyways, he said to live, live in harmony in the Lord. Indeed, I ask you also to help these women who have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are written in the book of life. Um, the message this morning is just that little whose names are written in the book of life. Now I took I wasn't sure that it would take uh, so many notes, but I got a small book here. We'll see how far we get this morning. Um, it was uh, a study that uh, was interesting that I began to get into it, and the Book of Life, something I thought, well, I'm sure I know all about that. But as I began to get into it, I found out maybe I didn't just quite know as much as I thought. And there was more to be known about it. So um, let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank thee, O oh God, today for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, that the Word is a revelation. The Word is a light. The Word is a delight. The Word, Lord God, is inspired by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God, for your blessings. Thank you, Father God, for your revelation and your leading by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, today we ask that you give us and grant us the unction of the Holy Ghost to be able to know your will and your ways. But we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We are talking this morning about is your name written in the book of life? Is your name written in the book of life? Now that sounds like a pretty evangelistic, and it could be, and we will look at that in just a few minutes. Every morning at exactly 11 a.m., a member of the House of Commons Protective Service staff goes to the area of the House of Commons that has all the books of remembrance. And at, at, at exactly 11 a.m., the duty of this House of Commons staff member is to turn the page of each and every one of the eight books of remembrance that are found, if you have that picture, are found in the House of Commons. There are 120,000 names that are in those books. The names of those who gave their life in the service of their country. Once a name is written on the pages of these books, they are forever to be remembered. As sacred as this is, there is another set of books in heaven and one book in particular that you better be sure that you have your name written down in it. It's called the Book of Life, or also known as the Lamb's Book of Life. Perhaps even today, as the books are available at Parliament Hill and these very special books to Canadians are there and they are turned every day, as I said, perhaps in heaven there is a display of the Book of Life, I don't know. 
Is it turned every day? Are people able to view it in glory? I don't know. But I do know that it is essential to have your name in it. And that it is essential to keep your name in it. For it is possible to have your name blotted out. Because the books of remembrance are on the internet, we have modern technology now. And so you can actually go online, there is a site for the books of remembrance. And so you can find out today, each page of the books that are displayed. When they turn it over, there is a camera or it is on the internet and you can see today's honored names. So you don't have to actually drive to downtown Ottawa and, and go up to the Parliament Hill and go into that place. You can actually see it online. And if we have that kind of technology on earth, well, I kind of think that maybe it's available in heaven as well. You know, there will be books and books. There is a book and books. There are books that will be opened not until the day of judgment. They cannot be viewed by anybody. But the Lamb's book of life is the revelation of those who are true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and Almighty God is proud, I would say, to display the names of his children. In fact, when I get to heaven, I might just mosey over there and see if I can take a look at the book. So I may be come across my name written on the page white and fair. Paul was making a passing comment about a couple of ladies who had ministered to the needs of the saints and had labored with him in the work of the gospel. And he wanted them to be honored and respected amongst all men who had labored in the gospel and gives the example. But then he adds this qualifying statement regarding all those who labor for the Lord in the gospel, he said, whose names are written in the book of life. How does Paul know this? Is it, is it just an educated guess? In one of his experiences when he was taken up to the third heaven, maybe in his revelation he actually saw the book of life. That's a possibility. Maybe he actually saw the names of some of those who were written and recorded in it. I don't know. It is my assumption, and that's always dangerous, but it is my assumption that he, he presumed that their names were written in the book of life because of their works, because of their life because of their obedience to the Lord, because of their dedicated to the Lord. In other words, I believe that he would have had this presumption that they were in the book of life because he saw the fruits and he recognized the fruits. When did you be in the book of life? If your name was on this. It says that whenever it is that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, then your name is written in. So there's an angel somebody there that's writing and putting names in because many hundreds of people are saved every day around the world and, and so they are being written down. And the other school of thought is that the book was filled and finished at the beginning of time. And in this book, the book of life, it is the record of the elect. Now, if we want to look into this a little deeper, it seems almost that there are two sets of books, one with the name of Israel written in it from the Old Covenant, and one that is the Lamb's book of life, that is those who have been redeemed in the New Covenant. I don't know if there's two books or not, it just seems that there's two sections, perhaps, of the one book. Let's look at the books of life. Moses, going back to Moses, he knew that there was a book of life. 
He knew that there was a book that contained the names of those who were covenant followers of God Almighty. And he was concerned that his own name could be blotted out and he was distressed when it came to Exodus chapter 32. If you want to turn back to Exodus chapter 32, you will find this is, uh, I made reference to this last week or two weeks ago, how that when the children of Israel sinned grievously against the Lord and they created the golden calf and Moses came down out of the mountain and he was so upset with them and of course there was a terrible judgment upon many of them. When they rebelled, Moses goes to the Lord at the end of the chapter and he, he pleads before Almighty God. And he says this in verse 31. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Alas, this people has committed a great sin. And they have made a God of gold for themselves. He's lamenting before the Lord. But now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, please blot me out of your book, which you have written. Please blot my name out of the book that you have written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. But go now, leave the people where I told you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sins. And then the Lord smote the people because they had won this wicked deed with the calf which Aaron uh, which Aaron had made. In my opinion, and I always have to emphasize that when I'm stepping out on a, out on a, lip, on a cliff, this book of life was a book of the living members of the covenant of Israel. Only covenant people would have their names written in the book of life. That is the true, that is true in the Old Covenant under the Law of Moses, and it is also true in the New Covenant, in the Book of Life that is the Book of God's saved elect. I don't believe that Moses was suggesting when he was so grieved about Israel that he would say, please blot my name out of the eternal Book of Life. That sounds pretty wild. I think that what he was saying, what Moses was saying, and this again is presumption, he was saying, kill me. Uh, I don't deserve to live. Block my name out of the book of life. Uh, take me out. Uh, no longer consider me part of your covenant people. I, I'm willing, now again, he was in great emotional stress. <laughs> He didn't maybe know exactly what he was saying when he asked to have his name blotted out of the book of life. He, he was uh, um, feeling like a failure, that he let God down, that the people that God had given him, that they had let God down, and because he was the leader, the Lord blocked me out. I don't deserve to continue to be one of your covenant. I don't believe Moses would have seen it as an eternally being blotted out at this particular stage. Having your name blotted out did not have the same weight of understanding as it does today. In Daniel chapter 12, so that's Moses. Now we go to Daniel chapter 12. We read in chapter 12 and verse 1. I know you're getting there this night. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. We read this. At the time Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise, and there will be a time of distress such as not has happened from the beginning of the nations until now. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name, who is found written in the book of life, will be delivered. 
again, we have this prophecy of Daniel, this prophetic word that says all those names who are written down in the book of life were destined to survive what? Physically, we know the Babylonian captivity and that they would return to the land of Israel. But this prophecy, like most prophecies, have multi-layers of, of revelation to it. So I can see this being a prophecy about the names being yes for those that survived the of Israel, of captivity of Babylon, but also it represents those who have faithful in every age of the church. God will always keep and preserve our remnant. That is his promise. To have the confidence in knowing that God will always keep those who are faithful to him alive upon this earth to represent his kingdom. But not yet. It's getting more clearer but it's still not quite yet crystal clear that this is a book of eternal life. Everyone in the, in the book of life of the Old Covenant, they did die, obviously. But there was a difference between dying and having your name blotted out. There was something about this book of life that was a waiting period, waiting for something else. And I believe that they were waiting for the Messiah to return. To turn it from a book of the living of the Old Covenant into of the eternal living of the New Covenant. Remember, nobody under the Old Covenant was able to go to heaven. What? Not until Messiah came. Not until their sins were forgiven. They were in a hiatus, they were in a holding pattern. They were in Abraham's bosom, those who had their name kept in the book of life, who did not disgrace or not abandon the law of God. Uh, those who did disgrace the Lord, their names were blotted out, he says it in Exodus chapter 32. But those who remained faithful, when Christ returned, when Christ died for their sins, it says that he set the captives free. He went into Abraham's bosom and he redeemed those whose names were written down, who were waiting for the consummation of Israel, who were waiting for the liberty of Christ. In the Old Testament, all of their sins just kept their name on the book. Uh, sorry, all of their sins being forgiven or being cleansed or being atoned for only kept their name in the book of life. But they still awaited the redemption. It is as though God the Father handed over to the Son the book of life. And he said, it's yours now. Because there seems to be a transition that it moves into the New Testament that this book of covenant people becomes not just the book of life, but now it becomes the Lamb's book of life. It now becomes the possession of the Son of God. It now becomes part of the redeemed. And those names that are written in this book were written at the beginning of time for God in his foreknowledge knew who would endure unto the end and the same would be saved. He hinted at this in the Old Covenant and he revealed it in the New. God was hinting that there would be a day when the names written in the book of life would not be written in ink, but be written in blood. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, we read this. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard, and a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence with the names of those who feared the Lord and honored his name. It's again, a, almost a picture again of this same book of life. Those in the Old Covenant that were faithful, who were true, 
who believed in the Messiah was coming to redeem them. Their names were kept in this book. This was the book that Paul the Apostle, who would have known about this book, was making reference to. A book of remembrance. A book of those who feared the Lord and honored his name, as Micah said. There is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved other than the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Son of God. When Jesus spoke to his disciples after they had come back, remember he sent the boys out, <coughs> sent them out two by two, sent them out into all the towns and villages of Israel, but it's before he was dead and rose again from the dead. He sent them out and came back, and they came back with glorious stories, and they said, oh, this is great and wonderful. People were healed, and demons were cast out in your name, and this was great. And Jesus said to them, he said, listen, guys, do not rejoice that demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written. Well, where were their names written? This is before Jesus died and rose again from the dead. This is before the new covenant came in. And yet he says to these guys, his disciples, that your names are already written. Because they were part of the covenant people. Because they were faithful and true and righteous and they were serving the Lord and their names were written in heaven as part of God's covenant people of those that Christ had come to redeem. Their names were already written down. They, Jesus didn't write their name down after he died and rose again from the dead. Their names were already written down in heaven. That's what he said. John writes this. He says, yet you have a few people in Sardis, this is Jesus, this is the revelation. This is after the Christ, this is after Christ rose again from the dead. In revelation chapter 3, the church at Sardis, he writes this. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes like them will be dressed in white and I will never blot out his name or her name from the book of life but will acknowledge their name before my father and the angels so in Revelation chapter 3 you have this book and he promises that those that overcome those covenant people, those who have accepted Jesus Christ, because we're in the new covenant now, he says, I will never blot your names out if you're an overcomer. Now, does that mean he could blot your name out? I believe so. My Calvinist friends say no, but that's okay. They love Jesus too. Uh, but here it is, this blot name out of the book of life does not mean God is going to kill you in this case. Right? But rather you're not going to have eternal life. Jesus Christ possesses the book of life. He warns uh, sorry, he warns when he says in Matthew chapter 10, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven but whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20, Jesus told us that there are some in the last day who will have cast out demons, who have performed miracles apparently, who will have done all kinds of things, and he will say unto them, Depart from me, for I never knew you. Were their names blotted out because of their apostasy? Were their names never written? <laughs> Those are the two options. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, Jesus spoke about those who performed these mighty signs as well. And he adds this, Not everyone who says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. 
Many will say, well, oh Lord, have we not prophesied? Again, he says it in a different way in a different text of Scripture. I have heard Paul getting back to Philippians chapter 4, where he looks at those who have served the Lord and he says, their names are written. I praise God, Paul was able to make that judgment call. Uh, I have been disappointed. I have had preachers and churches that have stumbled into apostasy and lived wicked lives. And I wonder, did they ever have their name written in the book of life? Or was their name blotted out of the book of life? I don't know. It really isn't for me to be able to make that decision. But in the last days, many will be deceived by the enemy and will rebel against the Lord. This is because their names are not written or blotted out of the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. God knew who would be faithful to him and who would not be faithful. God has always known who those are who will be faithful. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 says this, no one who overcomes will be clothed thus in white garments. The one who overcomes will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot their name out of the book of life, as I already said. Jesus gives this warning. Whether or not your name can be written and then blotted out is not the big question. The question is, do you have assurance that your name is written in the book of life? Uh, this book that now is the possession of the Savior, he, and he owns it, it's his. He's the guy, he's the guard of it. It is now the Lamb's book of life. We have historical record of it going back right to the very beginning. In the beginning of the law of Moses, there was this book in heaven that had a record of covenant people. And now, as we are in the new covenant, as we are children of God, as children of Abraham through Jesus Christ, as we are Israel, the church is Israel. Our names are written in that covenant book. At least I hope. We never, never are to be cavalier or trifling about our perseverance. God uses real warnings to keep us vigilant and to keep us preserved and keep us being sure that we are safe, that we are not careless. That is the point. Press on, as he's, yeah, the Word of God says, press on to make your salvation your own, Paul says, because Christ has made you his own. Right now in the Hall of Remembrance, an angel may be turning the page, like in part of it. Is your name written there? Are you sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you sure that your name is etched there? And if it is, praise be to God, do not take it for granted. Says in Revelation 21, this is the end. I went from the beginning to the end in this topic. The New Jerusalem, it says this nothing impure will ever enter into it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will enter. It is vitally important that your name is written there. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Have you bowed the knee and repented of your sins? And are you continuing to follow him in obedience? Those two things are happening. You can be assured, as Paul was sure, when he looked at the lives of others. And he said, there's people whose names are written. 
I pray we have such confidence as Paul to be able to say such of us and of our brethren. Amen. Lord, we ask of God today, let us take the moment of introspection. Let us look inwardly, Lord, and say, Lord, is my name written there? Father, is my name written there on a page white and fair in the book of thy kingdom, Lord? Is my name written? And then, Father God, speak to our hearts in this, moment, this holy moment of introspection. Speak to our hearts, Lord, and help us to have the assurance that, yes, my name is written there on a page right there. In the book of thy kingdom, thy covenant people, Israel. I pray that each one here and each one that is under the sound of me voice their names written there. The scripture says that that name was written before the foundation of the world. Our names are written in the book. We pray, Lord, that you would help us not to take that for granted. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I handed you a um, a song. What name and what number is it? The Christian phrase. One hundred nineteen. One hundred nineteen. Because I left the other other song out. One hundred nineteen in the Christian phrase. What stands? Thank you.